this is Enriching Family Life, and I'm Sandy Bengocher. And uh, this evening, we are going to be talking to Parent in TT, and uh, we're going to be looking at uh, conversations and how we have conversations, loving conversations with our children. You know, so much has been happening in our society lately, so much violence in schools, uh, so much um, parents uh, are wondering where their children are at night, so many incidents uh, are taking place. Uh, and I think it's so important that we find out what is happening in our children's lives and be able to build that conversation with them to be able to understand how to parent with them. So many of us are out there looking for help in parenting and I dare say also help in teaching and dealing with the students. So much is happening out there. So this evening we've invited an associate from Parent in TT and we'd like to welcome Sophie Barkan. Sophie, Sophie welcome. Thank you. Welcome Thanks for having program. me. And Sophie is an associate of Parent in TT, and uh, this is one of the very, very, very active groups in Trinidad that has been going throughout the country, doing a lot of work uh, in the trenches uh, with uh, uh, Trinidad and Tobago, doing a lot of work in the, I know the outreach goes all up to Blanche Shares and the district remote areas, and so really working to parents. So we're going to be hearing a lot about this group tonight, uh, and also telling you how you can contact them and Sophie is going to guide us through, you know, how some of the techniques that they use in parenting TT. So, Sophie, welcome again. And before we start, could you just tell us a little bit how, how you became associated with parenting TT? Okay, well, I embarked on teaching parents parenting courses about 10 years ago. I'm a mother of eight. My eldest is 29. And when he was 18, I realized I was in desperate need of adjusting my parenting skills. Um, I was a bit on the harsh side. I'm a teacher by training, so um, some of my tendencies were a bit kind of authoritative. Some teachers are authoritative. I was in that class, you know? Mm -hmm. And I didn't like listening to myself. I don't think my husband appreciated either my, my tone and, and my manner. And so um, I was very fortunate to be part of a parenting conference where some specialists came down from the States and they represented the Love and Logic Parenting Program. So I went to their conference, um, and then I went home and implemented their skills right away and got results right away. Okay. okay. Yes, so I was hooked, and I embarked to educate myself in their philosophy of parenting, their skills, and I was just so hooked on it that I said, I will go abroad to their conference and equip myself further um, at that point, I think I only had about six children. <laughs> and yes, yeah, so I came home and I, um, from that conference, I said, I'll start to teach this course. So I started to teach that course. And it's been 11 years that I was teaching this parenting course to parents in groups all around um, the north. Actually, no, I did one in San Fernando as well. And then Barbara had some psychologists who are associated okay, and this with Barbara parenting TT. Is, uh, Barbara King. Uh -huh, at, uh -huh. oh, she was the directress of um, parenting TT at the uh -huh. time. And she had some associated psychologists, Dr. Karen Moore and mm -hmm. Alicia Hoyt, who consequently learned the parenting, Love and Logic Parenting Program. So they were on board with parenting TT as well, and they were doing the training out in Arima. And then because I'm a teacher, I then, after six years or so, I then embarked on learning the Love and Logic teaching program, because there's one for teachers, specifically for disciplining in school, and managing students in school, the classroom program, you know? So Barbara invited me to Arima to teach this teaching program to teachers out there. So I have brought it to parents and I've brought it to teachers. Mm -hmm. um, that's how I became associated mm -hmm. with Parenting TT. Mm -hmm. And then I got called up by orphanages, to, to do work with them, their caregivers came so, to my courses. So they love and logic. And, and before we continue, we've opened up the lines very early this evening because we know that this is very topical and there are lots of parents out there who would love to chat with us, to tell us their experience, to tell us some of the challenges that we are facing out there, both teachers and parents. Uh, some of the challenges we have with bringing up children, with having, with parenting, with uh, discipline with uh, being able to connect with our children out there there's a there's a lot a lot a lot of challenges happening out there there's so many other things bombarding them so we'd love to hear from you please the lines are open very early and we'd love to hear from you 
So, yes, you were, the Love and Logic program is also connected with the parenting. Um, with yeah. parenting, TT? Mm -hmm. Well, they have, as I said, some psychologists associated with them, and mm -hmm. their Love and Logic, they are conducting Love and Logic parenting classes at Sanchez Street, Street in Arima at Parenting TT there all the time, every term. You know? Okay. Well, we have a caller online already, would you believe? Uh, and so, thank you so much for calling. Please go ahead. Caller. Hello. Hello. Hello, my name is Nadani. And I have not seen so few many years. Marianne is very, very good during her sister. And I'm very, very interested to hear what she has to say in this because I have feel miserably by doing my thing the wrong way wrong. The upside down pyramid that Henry talked about. And I really hope that somehow things can turn out right for my children. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for calling. Thank you so much for calling. And, you know, again, the caller, um, you can hear that so many of them out there, they don't know how to handle it. And there's so much desperation in this society. How, what do I now do? What do I now do as a parent? So there is such a need for, um, for programs like this. But when you, when you do the parenting, TT, what are some of the topics that you would cover? There? Well, parenting, TT, is an organization that links people up. So they have uh, lists of professionals, of people who can offer parent support. So one can call Parenting TT and ask them for the specific help that they need, for the specific support that they need. And Parenting TT will connect them with the appropriate service and support that they need, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know? So what are some what are some of the topics? Uh, because you know I'm hearing that caller voice and caller, and we heard the desperation in your voice. And thank you so much for calling. Uh, what are some of the areas that you would cover? For okay. example, well we cover topics like well discipline. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know how to discipline appropriately, as you said earlier, how to connect with our children, how teachers can connect with how with do you students. discipline appropriately, <laughs> Sophie? Okay, well. I, would, I mean, even I would like to do that. I'm an advocate for, for not giving licks anymore. Uh -huh. I gave enough of that, and I saw my children imitating me. Okay? So, and, and through my continued research on the subject, I learned that that's just not the way. There are better ways um, than getting physical and, and so on. And often when we use physical um, punishment, we tend to have anger at the base of it. And again, it's just modeling to them. And the society is riddled with people modeling how to deal with stress through anger, how to deal with, how to solve problems with anger. And that's just not getting us anywhere mm -hmm. fast, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So the best way to, to deal with, with um, discipline is through empathy. Empathy first. Empathy is understanding someone's feelings, understanding why they are and what they are experiencing. So, so a child comes to, all right, let's, let's, let's start with the teachers, okay? So a child comes to school and is angry and is, and, and, and is lashing out at the other students, uh, you know, um, how, what steps should the teacher take? Well, I hope to write a book one day. <laughs> I say this everywhere I go. And it's titled, Misbehavior Speaks. And this leads us to understand that when there's misbehavior, when children are lashing out, even when adults are lashing out, it means something isn't quite right inside. That there is pain or there is fear. That it just, I, I, I have summed it up to that. Mm -hmm. There's fear of rejection, fear of inadequacy, fear of failure. So the child comes to school or they could be embarrassed and feeling ashamed. So children are humiliated all the time. They're either buffed by their parents or by their teachers or they're embarrassed and teased by peers. So we're just all walking around with a lot of pent-up emotion. And the minute there's an opportunity to vent it, somebody will provoke us, then out it comes. I mean, we all experience it in our marriage relationships, at work, in offices, everywhere, at every level. So it's teaching people how to manage those emotions as well. So the very first thing, as I said, was empathy. So it's for a teacher to understand, uh-oh, oh, Something's going on with that child. So, so we need parent. to be mindful to stop and, and to stop and don't react. Correct. Yes. Correct. So mm -hmm. we want to move from a reactive behavior to responding responsibly. 
-hmm. you know? To be proactive, as Steve Covey, Covey mm -hmm. said, rather than being reactive. I used to be reactive. The principal of my school wrote me a recommendation when I was a teenager and saying I was volatile, you know, uh -huh, uh -huh. and I was. And, um, and I had to learn to temper myself and to control myself. And so this Love and Logic parenting course was brilliant with that. It taught me to pause, hold it, you know, because when, when we respond or react, sorry, with anger, we're actually blocking the frontal cortex of our brain working properly. Anger causes adrenaline and cortisol to flood our brain and it goes to the frontal cortex and blocks our rational thinking. We need our rational thinking to think rationally, duh, you know? Mm -hmm. And so the anger gets cortisol blocking our rational thinking and then you say things you regret and you react over, overly aggressive or harshly and, you know, um, yeah, in ways that are inappropriate, that cause more harm than good, that cause a divide in the relationship. And m my passion is to help people figure out how to have better relationships. I just want to see teachers have better relationship with okay. their students. So, so the child, so you come and the child reacts and you don't, the child is angry and you don't react. Right. What do you do? Sweetheart, tell me what happened. Come, I see you're upset. A parent can tell their child is too. The child is saying, mouthing off inappropriately around the parent. It's not a time for the parent to discipline the child and punish them and ban them for mouthing off at them. It's, oh, oh, that's a red flag. Misbehavior is speaking. I need to listen to what's going on with this child. Listening. I think most of the teenagers in this world are crying out to be listened to. So that's another topic that, you know, we would cover in, you know, in Parenting TT and in our courses and so on. Mm -hmm. We need to listen, and not just listen to the words, but to listen to the body language, because we're all walking around with body language. A sullen, quiet child who's not saying anything is crying out for attention mm -hmm. and will, might end up cutting themselves in their room, you know, or dealing with antisocial behavior. That is listening as well, you see? Uh -huh. So we teachers, parents, peers need to listen to one another, see what is going on, fish it out. And this leads us to that topic of be feeling safe. We want our children to confide in us. And how do we get them to confide in us? By making them feel safe. How do we make them feel safe? By holding our tongue when we want to shout and scream and discipline and have eruptions of anger. They will come to us with mistakes, they will mess up, okay? They will lose things, they will act irresponsibly, but threatening them, punishing them, only teaches them, oh shucks, it's not safe to go by mommy or by daddy or by auntie mm -hmm. or by granny or by the caregiver. I have to keep my mistakes to myself, which is very sad. We want children to feel safe and to know it's okay to make mistakes. The road to wisdom is paved with mistakes. Mm -hmm. I think most of us listeners could say we've gained strength and wisdom from making mistakes and from bouncing into walls and coming up to brick walls, you know? So we want children to realize, you know, their confidence hinges on, on experiencing making the mistakes and getting up and starting over again, you know, and falling down and getting up again, you see? Mm -hmm. So it's creating safety for them. So it's listening. You know, and you know uh, the, earlier in the program, you said that uh, when your eldest child was 16, was it 18? Uh, 18, yeah. You decided that uh, this wasn't working, mm -hmm. and uh, you went to do the parenting program. I'm sure that there are people out there who are listening to us this evening who are saying, my child, and, and I know there are hundreds, if not thousands, uh, of teenagers out there, lost, uh, teenage, or lost uh, teenagers out there, and parents are saying, oh my God, I did it all wrong. And, and what you're saying is that one, you once have said, I did it all wrong. How did you journey back? How did you journey back? Would you, because you, you came home one, did you come home one day and just flip and say, well, I am now this hello, I'm now this new mummy? I started. I started uh -huh. with baby steps. Mm -hmm. It took time mm -hmm. and perseverance and not giving up. And until, up, to, up to today, I am always researching and looking for, for ways to be better. In, in my roles, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so it's never too late. Um, I, I, I've even spoken to parents who have very adult children and have recommended some of the parenting tips. For example, a parent who had an adult child living there and was in the habit of 
Helicoptering, it's one of the love and logic terms, being a helicopter parent, when a parent is doing too much for their child and enabling them. So I gave this parent the advice from the program, do less tell, for them. Tell me, tell me a little bit about this helicopter parenting, because I suspect uh, you know, there are a lot of helicopter parents out there, because as we were saying earlier in the program, um, before, the, before the program started, a lot of children, they go away to university, they come back, they're in a long ago, you know, I got married at 20 and got out of my mother's house, um, but uh, my parents' home, but a lot of children, they are there for much, much longer and they're staying on because the society just, you know, they just can't leave, there's nowhere to go. And to I go. think it's uh. a Trinidadian thing where mothers really like to pamper their sons mm -hmm. and do too much for them. Mm -hmm. And this deprives them of standing on their own two feet, or well, all children for that matter. The more we do for them, the less they will do for themselves. So when we go running behind them to take um, things to school for them that they've forgotten, I mean, once in a while it's okay, but if it becomes a chronic thing and we're always running behind them to give them what they need, they'll be thinking, oh, mommy will bring it for me. It's okay, you know? Um, mommy will do that project for me. Daddy will help me with all that homework. I can just kind of sit back and they'll, they'll do, they'll help me, you know, they'll get it done. Mm -hmm. So I don't need to worry about it, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and that is just so, it's so tragic. I, I, I know of so many young adults, even middle-aged adults, whose parents did so much for them that it just carried on into their adult lives and their relationships and marriages and they just weren't and still aren't, even in their 40s, capable of doing some basic things. So they've been victim of, of helicopter parenting. Yes, yes. And, and I use the word victims. Yeah, yes. I guess so. I've yeah. never used that term before, but I suppose, <laughs> yeah. How, how do you um, stop being a victim of helicopter parenting? How do you, well, how do you undo, can you undo it? Uh, being a victim, you mean? The receiving end of having a helicopter a pa parent or, or stopping being a helicopter parent? Stop being a helicopter. Because, you know, you're quite right. So many of us parents are helicopter parents. Yeah. So. Well, the first part, Sandy, as they say in everything, is to be aware. So after this show, hopefully many thousands of people will be aware that, oops, they've been doing too much for their children and they can pull back, but not suddenly because that'll put the child into shock. So it can be done gradually. And it's given them space to learn from their mistakes when the price is small. So the child has forgotten something at home. Mm, they call up, can I have... No, it's okay. Um, sorry, darling, I really can't bring that for you right now. It's not convenient. You'll be okay. You're smart enough to manage. I know you'll survive. And they will find a dollar or two to buy a pie, and they will share, find someone to share lunch with them. They won't starve and die for having forgotten their lunch kit that day or... They will suffer a little consequence from their teacher for not submitting their assignment on time or their project or whatever the case may be, you know? So we must let them suffer a little bit. Mm -hmm. There's a big myth, you know, in parenting and teaching. We think that to be a great parent or a great teacher, we must protect our children from suffering and struggle and discomfort, you know? So we do everything in our power to protect them and shelter them from suffering, struggle, and discomfort. But that just does but a huge you, disservice to them because the real world is full of struggle and discomfort and pain. Yeah. You know? and that's can, you, can you and just go too much, Sophie, on one side and say, well, you of know course. something, you're a young child and you need to... Um, the parent in Titi said that I just need to let you go and survive and let me just let you Absolutely go and survive. Absolutely not. And, no, no, you know, no, 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 no. So the, so the Love and Logic program um, went on to offer people the skills to become a consultant type parent. So there was the helicopter parent. Okay. There was the drill sergeant parent yes. who's commanding, do this now, what I said, how I said, and do because it. Because I said so. Because I said so. So you get these children of helicopter parents and drill sergeant parents who grow up needing to be told what to do, when to do, how to do it, but yet they resent, they resent it, or everything being done for them. So we promote the, being the consultant type parent. And this is where you're guiding children to solve problems. You empathize when they make mistakes, and there's a skill for guiding them to solve problems. Oh dear, so this is so, so and so happened. Hmm, what are you going to do? 
and you put it back on them. And that's actually the first skill I took home from that conference oh, that worked the same night. Do? Okay, well, we have a call online, but I want us to hold that and come back to that because I know this is going very, this is going somewhere where I'd love to go. Caller, welcome. Hello. Hello, welcome. Good night. Good, good evening. Hi. Yeah, please, we're hearing you. Go ahead. You yes. can go ahead. Mm -hmm. Good evening. Good evening. I am also a teacher by profession, mm -hmm. and I'm a mother of five girls. And I am enjoying your program. Okay. What I want to add, though, is that I did um, a program with the Common Sense Parenting. I'm also part of Trainee Trainers. And what I want to add is that it is ongoing. Sometimes we falter, sometimes we make changes, we see improvements. Sometimes it is not that easy in terms of the teenagers and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm listening on. I have heard of the love um, program. The love I've heard and of logic. It, and mm -hmm. I'm listening on to see what I can also add in terms of my training to develop myself because I know that it's not a quick fix. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, and thank yes, you. the common sense parenting is uh, another one of the very, very, very um, excellent. prevalent, excellent, excellent programs uh, mm -hmm. in um, in our country that's yes. been offered uh, yes. through the Catholic Church. And through the Republic Bank who sponsored it. Yeah, yes. yeah, through that. And um, so thank you so much. I would love to hear from you, from your group, um, from the common sense parenting as well. Um, and all other parents, if you're out there and you want to call, and chat with us. We'd love to hear from you mm -hmm. this evening. Mm -hmm. You were you were talking about um, about the consultant parent. Um, yes. So the first you asked, so what are you going to do? So yeah. yeah. So in those days, my children were coming to me telling tales nonstop. So I got home from that conference, and they came with their tales, and I said, Oh, shucks, what are you going to do? And they were just so surprised because I no longer was going to be banning that one for doing that to that one and no, one, no longer stressing out over what, who did to what. And they actually resented me and did not have as much respect for me because I was listening to the tales and I was punishing and banning because of what that one said that one did to them. You understand? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the minute I started that skill, um, I implemented that skill, oh shucks, what are you going to do? Telling tales reduced by 80% and I'm not lying. Okay? They turned me gray early with these tales. You can imagine, I have five boys first, you know, okay. then, then this girl came, you know, um, the girl and then some more girls. So, yes, that was such a powerful skill and it worked immediately. So we guide them to solve problems as the consultant type parent and we are there for them if they need support, but we're, we're teaching them to solve problems from young. So you asked them, what are you going to do about it? And they'd say they don't, didn't know and I say, well, I think you're smart enough to figure it out. If you really can't think of something, I'll give you some ideas if you really want. And in, in no time, I weaned myself or weaned them off telling me tears. They realized mommy isn't going to get involved anymore. So it stopped. That's, you know? and that's excellent. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the consultant parent uh, really just throws the question back uh, at you. And doesn't yeah. get emotionally involved. You know, mm -hmm. As our caller said, it's not easy. It doesn't, it's not a quick fix. Of course not. I'm still... I'm still struggling. I still slip back, you know, mm -hmm. and of course. And your children are always your biggest critics, huh? Yes. Yeah. They're always very quick to say, well, you know, you did this and you did this and you said you'd never do that, but you did this. Yes. And yeah, yeah. Yes. Big critics. They're, they're always your biggest critics. Yes. Thank God, because yes. they keep you on the straight and narrow path to heaven. Yes. <laughs> hopefully. Hopefully. Yes. Hopefully. Um, but, you know, um, a lot of times as parents, we... And, and I'm talking about the public outside there as well. Our children are facing so many challenges out there. So many people. So many people are bombarding them. And the technology, and not te just people. Yeah, yeah. Technology is bombarding them. There's so many, I, so many forces, forces out there. It's mm -hmm. Negative forces. Mm -hmm. as, we have a society of mm -hmm. so many negative forces and out there. Subtle forces. Too, yes. That yes. May not be seen yeah. as negative, but yeah. subtly they are. They're doing wickedness and evil they're just pulling them away from us yes and and you know your child comes in and you know for example your child is involved with friends who are not uh, you know scrupulous mm -hmm. uh, people people who are influencing them quite a bit and so mm -hmm. and the child comes home and um, is angry is mm -hmm. violent uh, 
um, is tending to violence, and you can you can sense the child is tending to violence. How do you how do you deal with that? Uh, something like that. How do you deal with a child who is coming home with some violent behavior? Mm -hmm. Well, as I said, inappropriate behavior. I like to say it's like a red flag. Something is wrong. So they are getting pressured into that kind of behavior. Their needs are not being met. You see, we all have these basic needs, okay? We need recognition. We need to feel significant and important. We need love and connection, okay? So I think if a child is coming home with that kind of behavior, they are not having their primary needs met. Mm -hmm. It's a primary psychological need to be recognized, okay? Mm -hmm. And I want every teacher in this nation and Caribbean, whoever's hearing this, to, and, and even the corporate world, you know, even managers to understand this for their subordinates. Every human being needs to be recognized. And when we make people feel recognized and important, we're meeting a primary psychological need. And they're more likely to respond positively and, and to be happier. And that is why there's such a crisis and such a a big element of, of crime out there because these poor boys who are the criminals and, and of course we have female criminals too, their lives were thrown out. They were not made to feel important and significant. But as a parent, how do you win them back? How do you get them to confide in you that mom, I'm in trouble or dad, I'm in trouble? As I said you earlier, know? when we make them feel unsafe to be around us and to speak to us, they will go elsewhere. They will go and gravitate towards the gangs, towards the pairs that are not such healthy company. So the more we can make them feel non-threatened to be around us. You see, we make, we, we, we make them feel threatened by our reactions. We, we get on and we criticize and we lecture and the lectures just stream off our lips, you know, and, and we get on and on and on with them, rant and rave. And so why would they want to come to us if that's our behavior? We have to start by controlling our responses. Remember, we started off here. Bite your tongue, count to 10, breathe deeply, and hold your responses, hold your anger, make them feel safe, and they will come to us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And well, what that's about what I believe, and mm -hmm. I, I've seen it with my children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You've seen it too. I, 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 yeah, I stopped ranting and raving, and I would listen with empathy, and they would come and tell me and admit all sorts of things to me. You know, mm -hmm. maybe not right away, but eventually. And they're pretty open with me. I'm sure they keep some things back, but they're, they're very open. Yeah, and I think that confidentiality is very important because, you know, in our society so often you hear parents, I mean, in today's papers, uh, you know, um, someone is murdered and so, and then you say, but we didn't even know this person was living that kind of life. Mm -hmm. And this person lives in my house with me. And mm -hmm. I didn't even know that was going on with them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's our children. And yeah. You see, there's, you get this passive behavior. Remember I mentioned earlier that a, we need to read the language of the body. Some children will be quiet, going to their room, you know, and you know how they are now, they're going with their devices and you don't see much of them that child may be just getting more and more depressed. And the next thing you know it, something ter they've done something terrible to themselves, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we, we need to be tuned into their language. And another thing that helps children confide in us, Sandy, is, is, not, is um, not demonstrating to them that we are disappointed with them. I've heard that some children will not confide in their parents because they don't want their, ch their parents to feel disappointed in them. Yes. You see, that's another reaction us parents yes. might give. They come home with a bad report or they haven't done well in something or performed. And you know, us parents, we hold a lot of um, power on, um, on achievement, you know. And these poor SEA students, who are, some of them actually, you know, take their own lives because they don't want to disappoint their parents with their results. Um, so we need to again, not show our parent, our children that we're disappointed in them when they don't perform to standard, you know? Mm -hmm. And that leads us into a whole other topic but you know, Sophie, on children <laughs> succeeding and letting them succeed and not imposing success on them. Yeah, but you know, Sophie, you're putting a, a lot of responsibility on the parent, uh, and, and I think we are making a lot of assumptions that the parent is in a space where they can do all these things. Uh, and, uh, and from your experience out there, 
and I know you're out there quite a bit. Do you see, um, uh, how can I fix myself as a parent to, to, to have all these, to be able to count to 10, breathe, be mindful, recognize that you're walking in your room? How can I fix myself? Because, I mean, it's easy to do all these theories, uh, but how do I implement these theories? Very, uh, very important topic. And we speak about this exact topic a lot. I go on the radio quite often. Parenting TT has a slot on the radio every Friday for the last two years. And we speak about this very topic quite often. That's it. We need to, as mothers, as parents, as teachers, we need to nurture ourselves. Because, and we need to make sure our needs are being met. And that, you know, and hopefully it's through spirituality and our church support groups that we're getting those needs met appropriately, not involving ourselves in in, in inappropriate ways to meet those needs, you know. So yes, mothers have to look after themselves. You can't give what you don't have. So that's such an important topic. When you say look after yourself, what do you mean? Okay, we need to make some time for ourselves, even if it's 10 or 15 minutes a day, just to be alone and contemplate and treat ourselves to, to, to something that, that nurtures us, whether it's a nice drink a walk outside in nature, just time alone. I've heard of mothers locking themselves up in a bathroom just to read something peacefully and quietly, something that they really like to do, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I have used that, that particular one myself. I'm not locked up in the bathroom, but I know, like, when my children, and I had four of them, and they were, like, two years apart, and when I'd come home with them after school and, you know, four o'clock and that whole... And I would tell them, I need 10 minutes. I need 10 minutes by myself. Please, just 10 minutes. And sometimes it's 10 minutes over as yet, mommy, because, and the house is on fire outside, you know, it's 10 minutes over as yet, mommy, you know. But I think that time, would, it gives you that, that time to kind of refocus your energies and, and understand that this time is for the children. Yes, you know? and of course, what better way to do it than, you know, through prayer or, yeah. you know, tuning into some kind of spiritual program, you know, for a little while and, re you know, reconnecting, as you say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Reconnecting. But, there, but, you know, where there's a will, there's a way. And I, you know, I believe, you know, remember a long time ago they said it takes a village to raise a child, you know, and unfortunately society has changed so much and we're more individualistic we're more in our own little corners. We're not reaching out as much to one another. Mm -hmm. And let's hope, I think, is it let's because hope times are changing so much and things are getting so hard that we will go back out to supporting each other, you know, and turning to our neighbors for support. And ask our neighbor, God, just watch these children just 10 minutes for me, please, or 15 minutes. I just need to, you know, take a quick little walk in the neighborhood or, you know, do a is little Is it that the society no longer trusts the village? That too, you know. And, that too, and, you know. It's uh, and and I think that's a real thing now. Um, you know, it takes a village to raise a child. But I think you know, and and listening, listening to people, listening to. I don't think people any the people there's a trust anymore. People no longer trust the village to raise their child. So it doesn't have to be a village. It could just be, you know, a smaller representation of that. You know, mm -hmm. not the whole mm -hmm. village obviously mm -hmm. anymore. Because mm -hmm. you're right, the, the trust is gone. It's there are more dangers, there's more threats to everybody's safety now. But um, I like to say where there's a will, there's a way. You know, mm -hmm. that's one of the old sayings. And, if, you know, if somebody really sees they need to do it, they can, they can search for a way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, of course, mm -hmm. through churches and groups, you know. Mm -hmm. So your, I, I know your specialization is loving conversations. So. That's my favorite, one yes. of my favorite topics. Yes, so I know it's one of your favorite topics, uh, having um, loving conversations uh, with your children. And not only with your children, but as teachers. Uh, and I really want us to talk a little bit as well about, about teachers. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I, know, um, I know that quite a few teachers look on at the program mm -hmm. and um, they find it very difficult. So very difficult to have loving conversation. I mean, you have 30 children sitting in front of you coming from 30 different environments uh, um, and you have this huge syllabus to deliver and, uh, you, and you have varying because you have varying levels uh, of uh, um, acceptability of the information that is being handed out mm -hmm. and, and behavioral, uh, I mean, 
as it's a teacher hard. myself, it, it overwhelms you. It is. It, it is overwhelms you. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and uh, the society expects that each one of these children mm -hmm. will get your attention, that you will be able to understand them, that you'll be able to say, oh, you know what I think about uh, Thomas. Thomas is this, that, 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 that. And you have like about, at the end of a day, you've encountered uh, five periods by five. 30 children, 150 children, but I'm expected to, to know everything about Thomas at the end of the day, and I am bringing to the table all my problems as well, because uh, I was probably a helicopter child myself. You know, how? How, do, how is it going to happen? I think it, it just, it, it needs time. It needs a teacher who's willing to get the training and to train themselves. You know, our brain is capable of amazing things. Mm -hmm. And we start with a baby step. You know, we, we you know, get onto some resources online. We take a course. You can't wing this thing on your own. You've got to get the training. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. why, you know, training is so important. And the Ministry of Education and, and organizations who have the power need to get out there and train the teachers and give them support. What's being expected of them is her, it, it's... it's it, it's just unrealistic, you know, as mm -hmm. you just you painted the picture, the size of the classrooms and the syllabus. So, um, yeah, but, but teachers need to equip themselves with the skills and it takes the training. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and a loving conversation in this context would be like, if you have to have, let's just say a child is there disrupting, a very disruptive child, and you said, you know, you need to point out... Uh, this, something is wrong with this child or something, you know, something is happening in this child's life that is not quite right. But this child is also the gang leader for about uh, 12 of these students in this school. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am now encountering this child in my classroom. Um, how do I now manage this child who has to prove... Uh, um, yes, he is dysfunctional, you know, yes, he's dysfunctional, but he also has to prove and, and to maintain leadership in, in his little group and his little gang circle. Well, we don't have the, the time, mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if this is quite the place to go into that because it's a whole scheme that a whole school has to adopt, and it is covered in the Love and Logic mm -hmm. um, teacher training. So it is, so it is, is available, the information is available. It is, mm -hmm. it okay, is. So can you just tell us a, a synopsis of it? Give well, us, mm -hmm. in a synopsis, okay. Well, the school has to implement a program where, where children who are being very disruptive in the classroom, a place is provided for them away from the class, okay? And I've used this already in classrooms. I've asked them, um, not, well, asked, I've said, it has been set up where I would correspond with another teacher. Again, it's something you set up in the, as a system in the school where a place has been agreed upon in the school, another room or a chair in a certain part of the school where an eye can be kept on that child and they are put to do their work away from the rest of the class where they will not be dis as disruptive but at getting would, would the negative cause, attention. Um, psychologically, the child, would, would that... Would that um, affect the child in any way? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. but um, but so so the child studies there. I'm sorry, I interrupted. Yes, they, that's mm -hmm. okay. They, so they can be removed temporarily, and they learn. You know, but but something deeper is going on with that child. That child maybe does not belong in that classroom. Then there's guidance counselors, and there's also the the ministry has put you know support systems in a lot of the schools. To, to help children who are struggling and who are very, um, as you said, dysfunctional or disruptive, you know. Mm -hmm. But, there but are from systems. the teacher's perspective, from, from me as a teacher, and I'm encountering this in my class, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm asking you this because I know that there are many, many schools out there right now where the teachers are encountering a lot of a stress uh, with this very problem that mm -hmm. they're dealing and the students, it's, it's, it's a power struggle between the student and the mm -hmm. teacher. Mm -hmm. And the teacher is there and, uh, and the student, it's important for the student to show that I am really the one, I am the, um, the, the unofficial leader of, mm -hmm. this, mm -hmm. of this group mm -hmm. here. And I call the shots in this class, not yeah. you. Yeah. And it's happening, you know. Yeah. And, uh, the, and I think, um, yes, there's a guidance counselor and yes, there's a system in place. Uh, no, a but system but has I, to be put in yeah, place but for that I child need, to be moved as a teacher, class. I need to, to be able to manage. Yes, that, um, that teacher cannot be expected to teach 
the rest of the class with a very disruptive student there. And that's why you, you, you go past, you will walk through schools and you see children standing outside in the yard. I mean, my child has been a disrupt, one of my children, or maybe more than one of them, has been disruptive in schools and has been sent out in the sun to stand up, you know, and sent out of the class. So systems have to, you know, exist in schools for, for dealing with that, and they need to equip themselves with more, more systems and, and train, get the training to deal with that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know? Do you think there should be conversation between the teacher and the parent at this stage, or should it be when the violence erupts? Or, Absolutely or, not. Know? Oh, oh, no, no, yeah, no, 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 yeah. not uh -huh. when the violence erupts. Uh -huh. You've got to nip this thing in the bud, and mm -hmm, that child mm -hmm. needs help. And the parent needs help, obviously, because, again, the child's needs are not being met, mm -hmm. you know? Whether it's an attention deficit de problem, it could be a chemical problem, which leads me to say, all that sugar and soft drinks... Okay, that uh, and that's in, another one. Yeah. ...getting in the schools, well, it, can, it can be leading to a lot of disruptive behavior. Thank you very okay? much, and that's, some, that's my pet peeve. Let's drinks and juice out of school. Well, we have let's another, start with that. Yeah, we have another caller. Welcome. Caller, please go ahead. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. I am listening to your program, and I have been, I have taught all sorts of children, from the BTAM to point, and I have met all sorts of children. And you would be surprised to know, those who react a lot of times, they just want your attention. These runs are missing so much affection and love. And um, you could just take them aside and have chats with them, and you, that child could turn around the whole, his whole group that he had was misbehaving. By showing that child love, that child and affection and attention, that child could turn around his whole group that is misbehaving. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you so much for that. It takes a little time to take them away from the class, have them in, on a lunch break, share your lunch with them, and that is beautiful. You get a beautiful child, girl or boy. Uh -huh, uh -huh. That was my... That was That's my. And, and which level? Which you. level did you teach you? Hello? Which, yes, I'm asking you, what, what age group did you teach? Oh, teenagers. Teenagers, okay. Yes. Teenagers, and I also had, well, like, standard, standard four, five, sometimes. Mm -hmm. It was mixed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's attention and love they need, I'm telling you. And, mm -hmm. you know, confidence is another thing. Because what they shared with me, I cannot miss what I tell you. I can't tell my mother that, you know. So perhaps sometimes the parents need to be trained too. Yes. To yes. listen. Yes. You know? Yes. And I think that is the basic thing here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The parent, parents' training as well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because... Confident. I mean, I, I could come to you and tell you, yes, I'm in trouble. Perhaps I get pregnant or something. But I can't go and tell my mother that. If I tell my mother that, she put me out, which is true. I had situations like that. And that child end up on my step 3 o'clock in the morning with her brother. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And, right. that, and yeah. I had to take them in and call the bishop if I could get this child into the home front with mothers, find Port of Spain, take the parents the, the, and talk to the parents. And that child had her baby there in the home front with mothers. In. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that child was a beautiful child after. She joined the St. Vincent de Paul. She worked and she remained in Port of Spain. So it takes a lot. It takes a lot. It takes time. It takes love. And it takes understanding. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. And you know, and, and, and that caller, you can hear in her voice. You can hear the love in her voice. Yeah. And you know, it just goes to show 
what teachers are about mm -hmm. in this country. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know what. Uh, and, 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 and as I said, it, it, that what what that teacher was doing was meeting that primary psychological need to be recognized. She was giving that child the attention and the love, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And that reminded me of one of the Love and Logic teaching skills, and it's called the I Noticed. And they have used this successfully with inner city schools all in the States and so on. And a police, a police woman from San Fernando in a, in a workshop I was with, with her, used this skill with the boys. And basically, it's bigging them up, you know? What a handsome boy like you doing, you know, hanging out with those fellas going into mischief. You're too good looking for that. Mm -hmm. You know, recognizing, noticing something positive about that person. And you have met their need to be recognized. And as our caller said, you can turn a child's life around by recognizing them. And yes, taking them aside and loving them. There are no end of stories of teachers and caregivers who have been the hero who have saved children's lives because they weren't getting it at home. And, and they you know? weren't getting that, yeah, that's attention. And that, and and that, that leads mm -hmm. me to one of my other favorite topics is mentoring. The only way to save Trinidad and Tobago is by mentoring the youth. Take a young boy or girl under your wing and mentor them. That can save this country. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. and I know a lot of schools have been doing that mentoring. Um, I know for on St. Mary's College had a program. I don't know if it's still very active, but St. Mary's College had a, a mentoring program where mm -hmm. they would bring in past students uh, mm -hmm. to work with the boys uh, yes, and uh, to I chat with that. the boys. Uh, yeah. And it was you know, it was a very successful program. I don't know for sure if mm -hmm. it's going on. Mm -hmm. And you were chatting earlier about you were saying one of your pet peeves uh, was um, the juices and and, and snacks uh, mm -hmm. at the school, which is so true. And I know it, it brought to mind and uh, um, one of the schools in Xavier's private school, um, where um, I know my granddaughter just one day in the week, and I think it was it's such an excellent idea. Her teacher, Miss Huggins, one day in the week, mm -hmm. they're not allowed to have any junk in their lunch kit. Mm -hmm. It's fruit day, they call it. Mm -hmm. And that one day a week, and then sometimes she said, no, 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 you can't put that in my lunch today because, you know, it's it's fruit day at the school. And you can't put, you just have to put, like, health, a healthy right. snack yes. for them. Yes. And it's not, and it, it, it triggers something in their brain. Exactly. Sandy, there was an experiment done by some French people in Australia and around the place where for two weeks they went into schools to say only healthy food. Out of the mouth of the babes came these words. I'm sleeping better. I'm not getting so angry with my friends anymore. And the teachers were saying, they're calmer. They're more attentive. Less fights in the playground. Can you imagine just eliminating the sugars? You get better behaved children, less fidgeting, and less aggressive mm -hmm. aggression. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing. It really is amazing. It's, it's and we're so selling soft drinks in schools and the juices loaded with sugar. Yeah, and, and you know, and, and it's for the children. You go in school and for breakfast, sometimes breakfast time, and they have these cocoa, these, these soft drinks in their mouths, yeah. and, and that's what they're yeah. feeding their bodies that, that hour of the morning. I really take and, my and hats off to teachers for what, for what they have to cope with. And, you know, the thing about it is, and Sophie, we are not linking, as you just said, with the results of that experiment, we are not linking what they put in their mouths with the aggression and the bad behavior. And, and we're not linking it. And we can't see the connection. And that these, these um, sugars really do it causes... It starts there. It yeah. starts there. Yeah. You know, and it's, it sets it up. But, you know, I want to talk a little bit because I know we just have a few more minutes about the mentoring program and what, mm -hmm. if I want to be a mentor, how do I, how do I become a There's mentor? There's a national mentorship program, mm -hmm. so I understand. And I, I, I really don't know of too many. I know there's one in UE called Projects in Education, mm -hmm. and that one is where they invite the female students from UE to be like big sisters to the girls from the senior sex schools in the, in the region, mm -hmm. and they walk with them for the four years mm -hmm. that they're at UE. Yeah. So this is the female students at UE. They go to a certain um, facility where they get um, nourished in, and personal development and how to mentor and then they go out into the field and mentor the young girls. And one beautiful success story I like is, um, is one of the young girls from the junior sex school says, yeah, I just want to, you know, my, my, my goal in life is just to go and work in a fast food, fast food outlet. And after being mentored, she went to UE. 
Oh, that's fantastic. You know? And you know, even even at the other levels, because like today, my granddaughter, who is nine, she came home and she had this little this little pamphlet in her hand, this little leaflet in her hand, and she was very excited because the girls from St. Joseph's Convent in St. Joseph came across and they are mentoring the little ones at the primary school, and she said they came in and they spoke to us about bullying today. Mm -hmm. And do you know what bullying is? Mm -hmm. And do you know when you do that, you're being a bully? Mm -hmm. you know, and, and the thing about it is seeing these girls who, of course, are their heroes because they're in all these lovely convent, you know, mm -hmm. they, they're in the big school next door, mm -hmm. and they come in and they tell them these things. It makes okay. such a difference in their lives because now they understand. Mm -hmm. And she was talking to me, was telling me all about her little friend and her conversation with her little friends afterwards when these big, important convent girls went back. Yeah. You know, and, and it makes such a difference. And just think of the confidence that mm -hmm. is being instilled in the big girls who are doing the mentoring. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is just an amazing leadership quality, mm -hmm. being that big sister and, and mentoring the younger, younger mm -hmm. folk. Every school should be implementing mentoring mentorship programs mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. training girls to be mentees i mean there's some form four girls i heard in holy name who are going to belmont and mentoring some girls in belmont every friday afternoon helping them with their homework you know there was some in Bo going to boise village last year so there are little organizations yes. around yeah. doing that and you know sophie I, before we before because i know we just have a couple more minutes again i know you've just done some work in blanche shares in the blanche shares area mm -hmm. and you've you parenting tt has really been out there mm -hmm. doing for some years. yeah for three years mm -hmm. uh, um can you tell us a little bit about that parenting experience that experience of parenting tt in that yes, blanche shares area yes. which is really one of the outlying areas yes. outside BG there wanted in to Trinidad. do a North course project mm -hmm. so they contracted parenting tt to do this project out there. So I was in charge of the teacher training at mm -hmm. the Blanchichere Secondary School. Um, there was a mentorship program set up there. There was a counselor who went in there to work with every child. And then there was an appreciative inquiry conducted, which is where somebody from our team went to speak to the stakeholders along in all the villages to ask them what they really wanted for the area. What's, what was their dream? And she so the stakeholders would be like... From Las Cuevas, Blas Chichel, So this would be the, 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 the... Just major people in the communities. So you the know, owners of police, the shops, the police... police so health centers. The health centers. Yeah, so. exactly. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Prominent residents in the areas, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. And they were all interviewed. They were brought into workshops. You see, stakeholders is such a business too. Mario. And I know. Yeah, but, yeah. And they created a whole dream for the North Coast and mm -hmm. it is just a beautiful beautiful project mm -hmm. that that started and, and it's being taken up so so they created continued. this so you went in there and you spoke to the stakeholders uh, or what Somebody they from our team uh -huh. was in charge of that uh -huh. yes. when I say you I mean parent yes. and TT yes okay and and then what and they brought together the villages now at that before the project there was antagonism between the villages okay mm -hmm. and between students and so on and after this this um project this mm -hmm. project this initiative they were brought together in teams to play sports they have a green market now that they have every couple of months you, you might see it posted where they come together and sell their produce and there's more things but i've been out of it for about two years uh -huh, uh -huh. so, I'm not so what happens with the latest developments so what happened with this with this with your part of the project well i i got to work with the teachers for two years mm -hmm. i used i modified the 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 school love and logic training program for 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 the community i couldn't deliver the program as mm -hmm. is out of the states mm -hmm. it had to be modified you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i did the modifications and and, and it was very rewarding. It was heartwarming to see how teachers at the end, you know, got to understand, you know, I got them to realize what their students are walking out of when they leave their home. You know, and every teacher needs to be mindful of this. Think of what your student is walking out of when they walk out of their home in the morning. They're coming into your class carrying what? Mm -hmm. The conversations, the fights, the abuse, mm -hmm. the malnutrition, the sibling rivalry, the neighborhood rivalry that took place the night before mm -hmm. or the afternoon before or the morning before, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. All the and hormonal they, madness happening and within their bodies. And they all that into uh -huh. the classroom. Uh -huh. And so teachers need to be mindful of what their students are walking in class with mm -hmm. and to, to address their 
their students and what do you think about because I, I think this is this is one area that I see that, that needs some work what do you think about parent teacher relationships because you know over the years I think that's where we've seen a lot of breakdown long ago there was a lot more parent teacher relationship where the parent and the teacher worked together and the most successful schools yes have very strong parent teacher relationships mm -hmm. and that's a that's a and, proven and, fact. and that goes beyond attending the PTA meetings, mm -hmm. I think, you know, mm -hmm. because a lot of times when we say parent teachers, mm -hmm. they looked at the PTA mm -hmm. and they say, okay, well, I went to the PTA meeting mm -hmm. and it goes beyond that. It's, it's, I think it's more like about getting to know your child's teacher at any age, secondary school, primary school, and even as a past teacher at St. Mary's College myself, I know that there were parents who I could identify mm -hmm. right away. This is my, one of my students' parents because mm -hmm. They were always there, they mm. turned up, they were interested. But, but as you alluded to earlier, Sandy, is parents are so are struggling so much that when you don't see parents come into the schools, it's not that they don't want to, but they are just so struggling to keep on top of the demands on them, mm -hmm. just to provide the, the food and, and the clothing and the shelter for their children and we alluded to that earlier, you know, mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. they need they need the support. They mm -hmm. need a lot of support. And mm -hmm. sometimes it's literally material needs that need to be met before they can even think of going to see the teacher and enter the school and to be involved in the school. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know? Well, there's so much. There's so much more we can talk about, you know, Sophie, but we've come to the end. And I just want to leave before we um, before we go to leave the number parent and T T is six six four one five two zero. Six six four one five two zero and I, I can assure you because I know um, Barbara King is very and you can't say parent and Titi without uh, chatting without mentioning the name Barbara King a very very dynamic woman who we also hope to have on the show soon we have masters yet but we're hoping mm -hmm. to have her on the show soon as well and um, they've been doing fantastic work in parenting along with all the other groups uh, um, the Common Sense Parenting, the Love and Logic group. There's so much help out there that we can get. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's available. It's there. It's there in the church. You call the Family Life Commission. Um, you call any of the guidance offices. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, and there is so much help that you can get, and we know mm -hmm. you're not alone out there. There's so many parents. I'm sure you'd agree with me, Sophie. Yep. There's so many parents, so many teachers out there. I mean, you get calls, what to do? We don't know what to do. So there is help out there. Sophie, thank yes. you so very much for Pleasure. giving us this time, Pleasure. and thank you for all you do for our society out there. I, you know, I wish to do trying, more. Trying to save our society. I'd love to come out more and, and participate in sharing this with schools, with parents, and any get-togethers anywhere, I'd happily come and share some of this information with, with thank parents. Thank you very much. Again, the number is 664-1520. And thank you so much for viewing. And enjoy the rest of your day. Well, I will say very quickly. <laughs>